Good evening and thank you for joining us. The sudden disappearance of a Thunder Bay man has led his family and several volunteers to conduct their own search this afternoon. 51-year-old Brooke Shiboye was last heard from by family members on February 4th by phone. His family says that while he has long battled mental illness, he has always kept in close contact. And they say his behavior is very unlike him. Good evening and thank you for being with us. Newly appointed police board member George Ann Morisot says she's ready to hit the ground running and help address systemic racism within the force. Morisot served as chief of the Fort William First Nation from 2013 to 2015 and now works for Resolute Forest Products. She says her first order of business will be outreach in the community. Alana Pickrell reports. Four months after barring the U.S. government from purchasing Huawei technology, new reports suggest the White House is mulling over an executive order to expand the ban to all U.S. companies. Annie Bergeron-Oliver has more on what this means for Huawei and for Canada. It was a busy year for news in Thunder Bay with two major elections, two health care strikes and several high-profile criminal cases at the city courthouse. Stay with us as over the next hour we recap the top stories of 2018. And what other controversies and breaking news stories will Thunder Bay see as we head into 2019? Well, you'll have to tune into TBT NewsHour to find out. Thank you for joining us for this recap of 2018's top stories. I'm Nima Rajan, wishing you all the best in the new year. Well, Shane, snow was in the air this Valentine's Day, but it looks like we won't be seeing much of that white stuff this weekend. Yep, uh, this weekend. Now, I don't want to jinx it, but it looks like Mother Nature is giving us a break finally. Let's take a look at the conditions across the country first. To the west in Vancouver, at this hour, they are sitting at minus 2 degrees. A bit of snowfall in that area. Prince George, pretty cold there, minus 23 at this hour. Let's take a look at our extended forecast now. Look at those mild conditions. Cloudy on Tuesday, a high of minus 6 and a low of minus 14. Wednesday, mainly cloudy, a high of minus 5 and a low of minus 11. And a lot of sun after that. Thursday, sunny, high of minus 5, a low of minus 16. Sunny on Friday, minus 8 and a low of minus 19. And Saturday, minus 8 with a low of minus 17. Good evening, I'm Nima Rajan and welcome to Headline News. Major upheaval in Ottawa as Veterans Affairs Minister Jody Wilson-Raybould resigns from Cabinet. The move comes in the wake of allegations that the Prime Minister's office pressured her during her time as Canada's Attorney General to help SNC-Lavalin avoid criminal prosecution. Robin Gill reports. The RCMP is cracking down on international money laundering, charging more than a dozen people connected to organized crime. We believe that this, this network was uh, occupying a, a primary place in the money laundering world in, uh, in Montreal. The network allegedly used connections in Iran and Dubai to funnel cash into drug exporting through Colombia and Mexico. Kenora Rainy River MPP Greg Rickford planned an intimate evening with him Thursday in an effort to raise funds for the benefit of the Thunder Bay Atacocan, Superior North and Rainy River PC Riding Associations. However, he probably didn't plan to see a dozen ralliers outside the private venue on the city's south side. Multiple OPSU and other union members gathered outside the private residence before the event started at 7 p.m. to express their displeasure with the PC government's latest funding cuts. At a cost of $750 per ticket, the event was promoted as a fun time with food, drinks and great conversation. However, the only conversation that ralliers wanted to have with the PC cabinet minister was about the latest changes to the Ontario Autism Program. President of the Thunder Bay Family Network, Sharon Back, compared the price of the tickets to the costs that parents of autistic kids incur daily. No one from the PC party was available for comment today. There'll be another rally held on Friday at 4 p.m. at the OPSU office. MPPs Michael Gravel and Judith Monty Farrell are expected to be there. There'll also be a check presentation at the event from OPSU to the Thunder Bay Family Network. The groups plan to work together to host more rallies in order to get their message across to the PC government. Um, we need province-wide solutions, not solutions that are just coming from one part of the province. Dr. Allison says he hopes Team Care will expand to other clinics within the community. Lawson says she wants the program to encourage patients to take advantage of the many other services provided by Norwest for the community. Nima Rodden, TBT News.